Welcome to the Migrate 4 demo. Today, we'll take you through the new and improved features of Migrate 4, showing you how easy it is to manage and execute your migration projects with this updated interface. Let's get started. After logging in, you'll land on the projects page. This is your hub for all migration activities. You can return here anytime by clicking projects in the left-hand navigation bar. You'll see three tabs on this page. The Projects tab shows all active projects. You'll find key information like project name, source and destination connections and available licenses. If a project has more than one source connection, you'll see it listed here. Using the ellipsis on the right, you can rename or archive a project. The Archive Projects tab lists any projects that have been archived and from here, you can restore or permanently delete them. The Incomplete Projects tab is a brand new feature in Migrate 4. If you start creating a project but need to do something else, the system saves your progress, allowing you to pick up where you left off. At the top, there's also the option to create new project, which we'll cover later in the demo. Next, let's head to the Connections page, a brand new addition in Migrate 4. It can be accessed by clicking Connections in the left-hand navigation. Connections are no longer tied to specific configurations. They can now be created independently and reused across multiple projects. On this page, you'll see your source and destination connections. For each, you'll find the platform type, domain name, connection name, number of linked projects, and the status of the last connection test. You can edit or delete connections with the action buttons on the right. This is also where you can create new connections for future projects. Migrate 4 introduces an advanced section, accessible from the left-hand menu. It has three key areas. Logs provides detailed audit logs of actions taken within Migrate by users. Migrate services, formerly known as remote connections, this section lists all servers in the Migrate environment, including primary servers. You can check server status, uptime and migration tasks, download logs and connect to servers remotely. The administrate area allows you to add users to your Migrate environment, giving them access to your projects for collaboration. Now, let's create a migration project. Back in the projects page, we can click on Create Project. You can then provide a name for your project and click Continue. Next, you'll be prompted to set up a new source platform or use an existing one. For this demo, we'll create a new source connection and set up a project to migrate from Microsoft 365 to Google Workspace. Select Microsoft 365 as your source, click Next, fill in the required details, then click on Next again. You'll now be prompted to create an Azure AD application. Instructions for this are available in our knowledge base. Once completed, click Next to test the connection. After a successful test, you can click Next to proceed to set up the destination connection. For this demo, I'll use an existing destination connection. We can simply select this from the drop-down on the right-hand side, then click Next. You'll now see the summary page for your project. This includes details of the source and destination connections, their test status, and whether it is a new or existing connection. Once you have reviewed the details and are happy, click Create Project. Once created, you'll be taken to the project page where you can begin adding migration batches. Before adding migration batches, you should ensure your project is licensed. Click the license indicator in the top right corner, enter your license key, Click Apply, then Close to add your license. Now let's add a migration batch. Click Add Migration Batch. Here, you'll see options to create a batch based on the item type, or you can create an All Item Types batch. For this demo, let's create a Users batch. Choose the batch type, give it a custom name, and select the migration phase. You can also add tags to help identify or search for batches later. Lastly, choose whether to automatically import items from the source, which will gather a list of users immediately. If you skip this, you can always add items manually later. For this demo, 
I'll allow Migrate to populate the list automatically. Now that the batch is created, you'll see the new Migration Batch Creation flow. Many options are familiar. Bulk actions have been moved to their own dropdown. From here, you can copy selected users to a new batch, remove users, or clear the history for the selected users. Symbols are now used for data migration selection instead of checkboxes, making it easier to manage long lists of users. Double-clicking on any user will open a modal to edit their settings. The options available for adding items to your list remain the same, with the Get Items from Source, Bulk Upload or Manually Enter options available. Once you're satisfied with the items and settings, click Next. In the Configuration step, you'll see General Settings, Source and Destination Settings and Advanced Settings. These settings haven't changed from the previous version and vary depending on your platforms. For more information, refer to our knowledge base. Before finalising, you have the option to run a readiness scan. This checks your source and destination settings to ensure a smooth migration. It's optional, but can help avoid issues later. After completing the readiness scan, review the batch summary. If everything looks good, start the migration and you'll be taken to the progress page. The progress page is similar to previous versions, but with some improvements. You can click on the number of exports or import successes or failures to view detailed logs for each item, with the options now available to copy specific fields or all details to your clipboard. Stepping back to the project, you will now see that it is possible to add multiple source connections to a single migration project. This is useful when consolidating multiple platforms into one. Additionally, the environment scan can now be run either at the source platform level for a full platform scan or at the batch level for a more detailed view of what is in that specific batch. Also, when viewing your project, you can filter the batches by status, phase, entity type or tags, search for specific batches and also copy, edit, delete or view the batch progress using the action buttons. In Migrate 4, the reporting and alert sections have now been moved to separate tabs within each project, accessible from the top of the project page. And that's a wrap. You've seen how to create and manage projects and batches, as well as the new features and improvements in Migrate 4. We hope this demo has been helpful and we're excited for you to experience Migrate 4. Thank you for watching.